Hello and welcome to Outdoor Instructor Chat. My name is Niall from Instructor 101 and in this episode I'm joined by Mike from Mike Rider Coaching. As always, had lots of fun doing this. Mike is a mountain leader, British canoeing course provider and first aid course provider as well. Things that we discovered were talking about building rapport and being genuine as an outdoor instructor, how to react in an emergency, as well as where Mike gets ideas for games and challenges that he might adopt within the work that he does. Not forgetting those quick fire questions. Make sure to check out the show notes as well because there's lots of links in there to the books and stuff that we're talking about, but also where to find Mike online as well through Mike Rider Coaching. Other than that, let's get started. Enjoy. The intro. Uh, <laughs> on today I'm joined by Mike Ryder, who is a uh, paddle sports coach, uh, course provider, mountain leader, first aid course provider as well. And yes, normally do I'll make sure there's loads of links in the description below for people so they can find Mike as well. Um, as well. So yeah, like Mike, you've got loads of experience. Like you used to have a, a wealth of experience when I first knew you as well and first met you um many years ago um and so i kind of want to talk about like building trust and rapport with clients like so i've done a few of these outdoor instructor chats now and it's becoming more and more apparent or it keeps getting highlighted that being an outdoor instructor or coach it's all well and good having all these hard skills like the how to tie a knot or how to transport yourself across a, a river or, or lake you know, with a canoe but like, all that aside you're going to be working with people and it's the people skills which are so important like building that rapport with the clients whether they're kids adults like a charity group um, or yeah so there's there's loads of different backgrounds that people can come from to to do these sorts of things and it all revolves around people skills so mm. yeah I was wondering if you we could touch on your experience with yeah building up that rapport and getting to know people yeah um i think probably the most important thing that, that you can do is that you've got to you've got to be yourself about it um people are particularly kids are surprisingly quick to see through somebody that, that is faking it or somebody that is trying to be something something that they're not and they will they will spot you for it and they will they will call you out on it and it will just make your life it'll make your life difficult because you're going to have to keep up the, the facade for as long as you're with them so just be yourself and you know one of the really important things that we're we're hoping to do as outdoor instructors is to, is to get people to flourish isn't it and for that to happen yeah. we want to provide a space where they can be themselves and you being genuine being honest about who you are makes it a lot easier for them to do that there's going to be points within that where you might find that there are personality clashes um but you know you kind of you work your way around that don't you you can be honest about it i think the other thing that's that's kind of important as well is sort of setting expectations out early um so not necessarily rules and boundaries and stuff but expectations so they know they know what they can expect from you and you know they yeah, they know what they can expect from you and they know what you're expecting of them as well yeah i think you've hit on like some really key points there so like going back to being genuine and being yourself like i think there's um like because i've worked at other outdoor centers and i've been in this like supervisory role like helping to line manage different instructors um, and it's a great position to be in, and I worked with lots of different people. Um, and you know, I try and make sure I'm sticking to the main train of thought, but like, I want to hit on being genuine and being like the best version of yourself, or be, or choosing the version of yourself that you want to be for that time. Mm. So like, I've kind of thought when I'm doing these video things, like like Mike will know, or people that know me watching the videos they'll see that i kind of i act in a slightly more animated way than i do in, in normal life this is not how i i work and i perform like waving yeah, arms as, around in front of the camera. as soon as you hit that record button you, you changed <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, but still still a version of myself oh, yeah, totally. still a version um i just happen to know that i need to some it's plain to the audience and the, the medium to your work towards so like for the videos and youtube like i need to make sure and keep it a little bit more animated because in video form it doesn't translate as well uh, as i would normally but having said that generally when i'm working with certainly with younger kids i probably am not far off being this animated actually um some people might disagree but i think i've definitely had kids mock me for like 
why is he always talking with his hands so much <laughs> like, um, whilst I've been canoeing? It's like, why is he doing this all the time? Um, so yeah, choosing like the best version of yourself or that like, you can still be genuine, but there's like there's this version of myself. You can have like the, the corporate uh, approach uh, when you're interacting with people. You can have the a, maybe a different style of approach that you might take, which is still genuine when you're working with a youth group, for example. So I think that's a, a big part of it is choose like I have down days like everyone does. Um, I'm not being I'm still being genuine when I'm being down. Uh, but sometimes I might have to choose which genuine version of myself I'm being at that time. Um, I know. Yeah. Is that something that you'd agree with there, Mike? Yeah, definitely. And I suppose. Yeah, you're right. Um, but I don't think you can. There are certain aspects of things that you you, you can't you can't fake it. So. You know, yep. one of the one of the things that you quite often spot with people that are new to the industry coming in working in centres is there's always some people have this really massively loud personality and that's great and that works for them and that's that's their style. And like you say, you can apply that, you can apply that variously depending on the situation and the people in front of you. But if that's not you trying to be that person and trying to kind of keep it up at that level for that, that amount of time, it's pretty it's pretty exhausting. Um yep. so yeah, kind of you know, within within the kind of spectrum of who you are be true to yourself but as and as and when so you know there's a moment for you to kind of show yourself the more compassionate side there's a moment for you to be full-on gearing people up loud enthusiastic let's go there's a moment to be to be serious and straight to the point yeah yeah and the thing you're so right the the instructors and yeah it is it is sometimes the, the ones that are starting off within the industry within the industry and I completely get that. that that is definitely the time to experiment and try different things out a lot isn't it so I'd encourage people to, to try different things but mm. yeah like if you're trying to keep that up like if I tried to keep up the the, the video version <laughs> of FIFA all day like it would be full on I'm, I'd be exhausted by the end of the day and yeah it would just burn you out and people will see that pretty quickly <laughs> yeah um and yeah you also touched on expectations there um about managing the expectations of of who you were working with. Uh, did you want to expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, I think um, there's, there's kind of two two sort of thoughts with that. I think one of them is is kind of if you're maybe if you're working with younger groups, sort of you can kind of kind of set it up. It we're going to get on really well if you do this, this, and this. This is gonna. This is the things that I might have to be a little bit less fun if you do this kind of thing. So they sort of they kind of know know what it know what it is, but also. Again, if you're if you're working with adult clients, um, that kind of expectation, particularly in a sort of coaching context and things like that, it's okay to ask me questions. If this doesn't work, then please just say, if you think I've just talked a load of nonsense, it's okay to tell me. Setting it up so that people understand that actually it's okay to, to have that that little bit of pushback if they need to if they need to, but also that um, that if they start to push too hard on your boundaries, then they'll they'll come up they'll come up against a sort of maybe maybe a different genuine version of yourself <laughs> yeah yeah the expectations part is so like with that you know the whole first impressions yeah so on that you can get like but laying out those expectations is it it can make such a big difference further on down the line when when you're working with people mm-hmm. um like what rules and things that what expectations that expectations that you have um of the, the group but also the expectations that they might have of you and then you can know again as it's so important to trying to adapt to the, mm. to the needs of the group and go actually maybe it is that you wanted a bit more of a focus on, on this particular aspect of a, of a course so, or or whatever or training or, or session we can focus a bit more on, on something mm. or flip side we could go okay that actually might not be realistic um, it might not be realistic for, for us to be able to learn this entire new skill um, all within an hour. So, yeah. yeah, and I think if I think if if you're doing that, it's always really important to explain why. Um, very often, uh, yeah, yeah. Very often you can you can start with the reason why. Because of this, we're not going to be able to do this. Because of this, I'm going to need you to do this, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that um, there's nothing there's nothing more frustrating than when someone says why to say because I said so you know pe- people have got to be let in let in on your on your decision making and your your reason for things sometimes you might have to do that afterwards but it's always it's yeah. always good to kind of let people know this is this is why this is happening and that like you know 
coming back to your question, that helps to build trust and a rapport with people because they feel like they're they're involved in what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so I want to talk to you about because uh, you're a first aid provider as well, um, and something that came up just within my thought process recently was that um, we can deal with lots. Of, we can deal with emergency situations in in various contexts as well. But I just thought I'd ask because you're a first aid provider. Like so, when we do all well, the courses that I've been on, we talk a lot about oh, okay, this is what you need to do if this happens. This is what like if okay, so if you counter a bleed, then you're going to do this. Brilliant. It makes a lot of sense, of course. But something that which I don't think. I've seen highlighted as much on these courses um, is how to act. So talk about, okay, yep, someone, someone's injured themselves or twisted their ankle or something and gone over. You go, okay, cool. And then how to react in that sort of situation. Um, and yeah, feel free to expand on this in lots of different other contexts as well, Mike. Um, but yeah, so what's your take on how to react or act? in those sorts of situations i think there's two uh two or three aspects to this. i think the first thing is that you've got to be really self-aware in these situations because the the, the natural tendency is that adrenaline is going to be pumping there's a lot going on um and the the tendency to potentially over or underreact or misreact because you try and go in too soon and you kind of misjudge where where you're up to with it is massive so even if it, if it means just taking that little minute to kind of compose yourself and, and think, it's better to, to do something 10 seconds later and do the right thing than rush in and do the wrong thing and, and make, the situation, make the situation worse. So that, that kind of self-awareness is really important. I think the, the other aspect of this is that there's, there's no substitute for kind of having, having a bit of information around it. One of the first things that you, you're taught on a first aid course is you do your kind of your top-to-toe checks you do your initial checks and you do sort of things like samples or so questioning. It's all about finding out information, isn't it? It's the same with any any situation that you find yourself in. The more information you've got to work from, the better your decisions are, are likely to be and the more relevant and useful the actions you take are likely to be as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, there comes a point where you've got to stop gathering information and actually do something. But yeah. you know, that's, that's kind of down to, down to the situation, down to the situation that you're in. And what I would say as well is that if you're working in a in a dynamic environment, so you know you're out on the mountains, you're out you're out in a lake, and the situation and the weather, whatever, can change quite quickly. Just being constantly aware of of where you're up to before the situation happens gives you a massive head start in that. So if you already know, for example, I'm in the middle of a group, I've got three people behind me, three people in front of me. You've saved a little bit of time because you know where people are. If you, for example, uh, know where you are on a map so this idea of always knowing where you're on a map thumb in if you've got to try and make uh, make an emergency call you're saving time because you're not having to do that that bit of navigation so keeping yourself kind of well informed and, and up to date and having that information there to work off before something goes wrong is really key I think and it, it just kind of it helps it helps that uh, that process run a little bit smoother I think the third thing to this is that with any sort of emergency training or rescue training um very very little of it is set in stone so there may be within let's take i don't know let's set, let's take a, a a kayak rescue as an example yeah yep. so you there is two or three set ways that you can empty a kayak put a person back in it yeah but that's that's kind of a, a closed skill almost within a bigger situation isn't there so what yeah. you want to be able to do is kind of apply those closed skills variously to the situation that you've got so you've got some kind of structures and frameworks so first aid you've got doctor a b c d e or however it's however it's taught self team uh victim equipment all those kind of things are kind of there as a framework to work off to help you kind of move in the right direction but very very little of this should ever be considered as as kind of set in stone it's there to support you to help your thinking process in the situation that you've got which is why there's no substitute for experience, for kind of varied experience of, of different environments, of different situations, because again, it just gives you that kind of information head start. I've seen this before, or I know what's likely to happen here, or, or at least I'm comfortable in the environment I'm in. There's less information sort of trying to bombard your brain 
so you can be more effective in your decision making if that makes sense yeah yeah so it just so i can like just clarify what you said on certainly on that last bit um it's almost like to that varied experience think about it like um i like to think about it like broadband um as, so like if you've got lots of experience you don't have to use as much memory or energy or mental capacity to try and sort something out mm. um, uh, just to and then when you so when you do come across a situation that it's it's a bit slicker and not quite as you know like jerky or, or like robot like or trying to work something out you can be a bit more fluid in your action is is, is that what you were trying to say there towards the end yeah i think so i think yeah it's kind of the, the more experience you've got to, to draw on the better but also just just kind of remember that there are these these structures in place they're usually acronyms aren't they um that that help you that help you kind of work through that so they're there to help you help your decision making as well but you know they don't they don't always have to be be set in stone you can apply them variously to the situation you've got in front of you yeah yeah and yeah it's it's about what the the end goal is isn't it and not not losing sight of that i really like um yeah, I just really like there's a couple of bits like the gathering info, gathering information, like taking a moment to just go to pause, try and gather in that information and, and work, work things out. Because I think what I've encountered, whether it's like a, a first aid scenario or just like a logistical thing, like someone comes up to you, it's like the kit hasn't arrived for, for whatever reason, it's not in the right place, it's been transported somewhere else. Someone comes up to you and goes, What do we do? What do we do? And it's like really easy. Um, I've definitely been caught out right in the past where um, you kind of go, right, I need to go into this like panic mode, if that makes sense, because they're already panicked. Yeah. Some of the person that's approached you. Um, so to flip that on his head, like it's really good to, to remember that calm is contagious. So if you're calm, other people are calm. If you're panicked, then other people are going to panic, like they'll, they'll freak out, especially when you're in a, in a leadership role as well. Um, people look up to you and like, I'd encourage instructors who are listening to this, like when you get the chance and when it's safe to do so, like play around with it. Like you might, like if you end up like uh, trying like say on a, on a bouldering wall and then start trying to speak in like a really panicked way, see what happens. So, um, and see if people start climbing faster, like traversing across the wall or, or not, and then try and do it again whilst being a lot more calmer and slower and more paced out with what you're saying see what happens because that's exactly what happens with emergency situations as well doesn't it it is yeah i think that the sort of the only the only caveat to that is that sometimes you are going to have to be very direct and there yeah. is there is a moment for you to literally say move there grab that pull that do this and be and be really really direct uh, and then the time to sort of go back to the kind of yeah. softer version of you come comes afterwards when you're checking they're okay um, there's nothing there's a few things frustrate me more than watching people trying to perform a rescue on a cold day when someone's in the water and they're sort of gently floating next to them going right are you all right can you pass me your paddle like, I want to see you be direct I want to see you sort that out manage the situation properly then comes the time to sort of apply a bit more a bit more soft skills once they're safe oh mate so true yeah <laughs> I've been 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 the person on the, on the other end of that of someone's assessment yeah, get me out of the water <laughs> oh God, we, we've even practiced this like just come on <laughs> like wouldn't it just be better like yeah. just to do this really quickly <laughs> but yeah you're so right you are so right there's there's, there's a definitely a time and a place for it, isn't there and yeah being direct when necessary is is definitely a, a useful skill to have mm. so good so i see we I spoke you're like a, a paddle sports coach and course provider uh, as well and in fact it wasn't too long ago like for a water trip like you were hired as well to deliver like a, a canoeing day for, for the staff team that I work with and I I was able to turn up to it and I was like yeah I get to work with Mike um well like Mike gets to work with me and you might have been like oh I know. <laughs> It's oh, always good to see you, mate. That's like ninety percent of the reason I'm here is to talk to you. <laughs> but like, um, I wanted to, to ask, like, where you get where you're supposed ideas. to. You know, it's good to see you as well, Mike. But never mind. We'll, we'll move on with that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to brush over that. Very yeah, casually. you know that whole thing about sort it of goes, building goes, trust and rapport. Uh, 
That's what I was saying, right? All oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I look <laughs> Sorry, mate. I assume, I assume you'll edit spit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I kind of want to pick up on where you get inspiration for, for games and challenges from for that. So, because, like, even on, on that day that we're talking about is on the River Dee, so in Chester, like, right in the town. Um, and, you know, years later, I'm still, like, picking up, I'm seeing you deliver different ideas and, and pick things up, and I'm like, oh, man, like, that's amazing. So, yeah, what, what helps to inspire you uh, with all these different games and challenges? Um, I mean, like, if I'm being honest, 95% of it is theft. Like you see a good idea, you right. take it, don't you? The, you know, there's 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 no copyright here. Um, you know, unless it's unless it's written in a book or, or academic, then you might have to you know reference it. Um, but yeah, just just watch watch what other people do, uh, and and kind of learn from it. And again, just because you've seen a game played by a certain group or somebody a certain way, doesn't mean it's fixed. You can kind of you can look at that and go, hey, that's really good. We could try doing it this way. We could try doing it another way, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you just kind of yeah again it's that it's that kind of experience that seeing things and we always talk about this idea of a toolkit don't we so you've got the you've got the toolkit you can dive into it and you can pull it out and go we're going to apply this to this situation or this to this situation um and the more you do that the more kind of experience you've got and the more people you've worked with and the more people you've you've watched to do things the easier it is and the kind of more stuff you've got to, to pull out of the, the hat to pull out of the toolkit um depending on the, the group that's in front of you and I think, you know, when we when we start people off in this industry and we start people off in this job, we 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 very often get people to go through the process of doing a doing a session plan, doing a session plan and review it, do a session plan and review it. Um, I've not written a session plan for years, but a long, long time ago, I wrote loads of them, and that that process is is ingrained now. And you kind of you go through it mentally. You can go through it before a session. You can go through it mid session or mid activity or whatever it is as things change um, because you've got that kind of experience to draw on. I know I keep saying the word experience a lot, but there is, there is no, no substitute for it. So yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of it. Take it, take everything that you see. If it looks good, take it. If it looks rubbish, remember it and don't do it. Um, but you know, use it, use what you see. Yeah. And then like on top of that, I'd say is make it your own. You know, the whole, like we were saying just earlier on like about being genuine, Mm. like um there's so many different spins you can do on a you know we've talked about um games with aims in, in the past like, like cheesy but but um but there's lots of different ways that you can do that like or run the same game of tig tag or like stuck in the mud um like there's different ways of still delivering that uh, as well like i might be like a really well, we'd probably both do like a very off the wall style, uh, when, <laughs> but like there's other, there's plenty of other outdoor instructors that would approach it in a very different way to how we would, as well. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's that's fine, isn't it? You know, you've got you've got your own style, you've got your own way of doing things. I think as long as I think that you know we we've talked a little bit about this. I think the kind of the big the big caveat to sort of doing things your way and doing things with your style is that you don't just get stuck in that. It's like, I'm going to do it my way because my way is the best, regardless of if that is what the, the group of people you've got in front of you need. You have to have that willingness to kind of go, well, you know, I like doing it this way, but actually for these guys, this other way might be better. And kind of having that, that willingness and, and more importantly, ability to, to do that. Yeah, to stay flexible. I think it also makes it a lot more interesting as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, like the, the us as instructors, like it just makes it a lot more interesting or like trying to do it in a slightly different environment if, if it allows you to um because then that like like that like game of tig um could be very different in a different environment couldn't it like if you did it on like flat moving water to like, a, like even somewhere with a bit of flow um that could make a big difference into the tactics and strategies that people use or certain areas or parts of that area it just make it a lot more interesting for you the, as well. So yeah. yeah, it does. And you know, if it's if it's interesting and if it's enjoyable for you, that's going to come across. And the amount that you're engaged in and enjoying what you're doing is going to affect how your group, how the people you're working with, are going to be uh, engaged in and enjoying what they're doing as well. Yeah. So 
I'm just going to throw a question out there to the the one-on-one audience as well, because um, like, so I can't remember who I was talking to. I've definitely spoke to another paddle sports coach, um, uh, and they were saying like, yeah, we get loads of ideas from what from doing assessments or like or being providers of a course. Yeah, um, and that's great, and it's such a good position to to be in to pick up loads of different ideas and i'd love to know where people where else people are finding these different ideas as well if if there are other places to find these ideas apart from through experience or, or watching others because not everyone is going to be in the people that probably would benefit from from this sort of information aren't always necessarily people providing those courses or assessments so unless you know, Mike, like, unless you've got any thoughts on where people can find that sort of information. Um, I, yeah, so, you know, you, you're right. That it, is a, it is a massive opportunity as a course provider to watch so many other people. It's kind of a privilege as well to watch so many other people and kind of get to get to see what, what they're doing. It's one of my favourite conversations to have in a debrief is that idea was so good, I'm going to steal it. That really sets somebody up to go on from that assessment to... Uh, to sort of succeed and, and with a bit of confidence um so yeah you not everybody gets to be a course provider but there's always the opportunity to go and watch courses to go and be a guinea pig on courses to go and kind of pick up pick up ideas that way um so you know those are those are opportunities that are out there definitely definitely take them yeah yeah because there's like there are like a couple of books out there as well um there's a climbing games book that's by paul smith i can say at the top of my head um there's canoe and kayak games book as well i yes. can't remember the author of that Lowell collins so paul lowell collins i think Lowell. lowell i might collins. be wrong if i'm wrong you can edit that out in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and you can find <laughs> it out and just dub over the right name there <laughs> either way i'll find a link uh, in the <laughs> and yeah i'll put it in and then we'll both look really really smart when we've got it wrong <laughs> um but yeah, so those those things ex- exist, um, and they're good for like a skeleton framework. But yeah, I'm just curious if there's other other sources out there. So yeah, well, good. Great. I have actually had the, the the chance to interview you before, and so with these outdoor instructor chats, we've done like these quick fireish questions, and I was thinking about this just beforehand. It's like, should I do it? Should I not? I'll behave. I will. Time, I promise. Yeah, you'll behave this time. <laughs> There's a whole blooper reel in between. <laughs> I'm trying to work with Mike. <laughs> but um, I was being myself. We've discussed how important it is to be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's your defense. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll do the quick fire questions again. I'm curious to see if there are... Some, I, and I'm going to ask some very similar questions, but I am very curious to see if the answer has changed at all. Okay. Because odds are you might not remember what you said. So we'll, we'll give it a go. Quick fire questions. So favourite outdoor space to be? Uh, it has changed because at the moment, I love being uh, in the woods near my house with the kids. Um, that's that's, that's why I love to be at the moment. Or uh, anywhere on the water with the kids that they, they are loving paddleboarding at the moment i can't get my four-year-old off the paddleboard when i'm on it she just won't move she sits on it she dangles her feet in the water she's getting alarmingly confident as well now she moves around too much without telling me so <laughs> we've not fallen in yet we've not fallen in yet but the day is coming um <laughs> you're getting that varied practice in by the sounds oh, of it. Right. yeah yeah my, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice one brilliant Okay, so I did ask you last time, are you part of team land or team water? Now, that's like a, a question which I, I want to adapt because obviously you, I asked you last time, you're like, water, 100%. I was like, not even, not even a little bit? And then you went 99.9% <laughs> water. So what would it take to change or persuade you to get it to like 50-50? So I to think- make you more of a land-based... Like just yeah, what would it take to do that? I mean, obviously, i i work as I work as a mountain leader as well, and I, I love the I love the mountains. I love being in the mountain environment. 
Um, I love kind of high up, high up wild camps. I look. I'm I'm a big fan of, of early morning. I think if you're if you're on a totally unrelated subject, if you're an outdoor instructor, you and you want you want to kind of make sure that you keep that that passion going for the outdoors. Get yourself out at sunset and at sunrise and just sort of experience the outdoors for yourself. You don't need to take a group. Just just have that moment outside for yourself to kind of rekindle that that love for it. Um, I think I was probably being a bit a bit cheeky last time um, because I I do I do love the mountains, but given given the option one way or you know one way or another i would probably generally veer towards being on the water yeah but, and i would encourage like i'd say like the, the photos that you you take with your like sunrise like like shots of you on the on the water that's like in a canoe or like on a paddle board like i'd say i look at them and go oh man i wish i'd done that and so many times i say that so i haven't <laughs> Just do it, man. Just check the weather's going to be good. It's going to be clear. Set your alarm. Get up and go. It's awesome. It's the, it's a really good way to start your day. And if yeah, you do it early, if you do it early enough, you can have a nap before you start work again. Smooth. Yes. I um I but I'd, I'd encourage people to check out some of Mike's photos on on his Instagram um, for that because yeah, they are class. They are class. Um, a good instructor always has a sense of humour. Sense of humour. Different answer. Different answer. What did I say last time? Uh, you said a plan B, I think. That's it. Which I, which I do agree yeah. with. Yeah. And then when cool. plan B fails, that's where the sense of humour really has to kick in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I feel like this has turned into a test now to see if you're consistent. <laughs> yeah, I should, have watched, I should have watched that video back before coming to talk to you again, shouldn't I? Never mind. <laughs> If that wasn't the intention, mate, I, I promise. <laughs> we develop. If you're not developing, then then go get a different job. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, on that note, then, tenuous link. If you weren't an outdoor instructor, what would you be? Well, uh, as you as you know, and as I think most people that know me know, I I am a church minister in training, and as I'm pretty much not an outdoor instructor at the moment, that is essentially what I'm doing full time. So yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like this, you know, we were talking just before this, uh, before we started hitting the record button and chatting. Like, um, yeah, like it sounds like you've been super, super busy at this time, um, doing the minister work with it. Not just that as well, like setting up, pretty much setting up a food bank or running that as well. So yeah, mate, that's a, a, a big deal, man. So yeah, I'm sure there's lots of people that are super thankful for, for people like yourself that are taking the time to do that sort of thing. Man. Um, right, if we move on to the last question then. Favourite piece of gear or equipment? I don't think I asked that one before. But I've, I've asked it to a few others. I think it's probably the one which sometimes people have gone, oh, I don't know, like cause they've probably got lots of pieces of equipment to choose from. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's, a, that's a good question. I think um, if I was going to going to kind of do the 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 non-branded uh thing and i think most people agree with me they say that there is there is nothing better than having a warm pair of socks at the end of a cold day like a warm dry pair of socks when your feet have been wet like no matter yeah. no matter what what make or brand those socks are they are yeah. they are the best socks in the world aren't they um they're, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah man definitely yeah that's i think i remember so let's like on that note, I think my very first mountain day is that I, I grew up in Leicester. There was, there's no mountains there. So like, I think I was 22, but the first time I went up a mountain, um, Helvellyn over like uh, sh- striding edge, make sure I got that right. Um, and then like in the snow, I was like, this is nuts. Absolutely <laughs> insane. Like, this is an act. I didn't even know there were mountains in England at that point. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, <laughs> it was really embarrassing now. But, um, but I remember coming back down, getting back in the car, and my mates were like, oh, where have you, where are you, like, spare socks and, and shoes? So, like, I didn't bring any. Like, I just wore, like, my boots and, and those same socks in the car on the way home. And then the car broke down on the way back as well. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, God. But, um, but yeah. I've I've learned since that yeah, spare shoes 
and socks and breakdown cover are amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Um, I, I think I prompted this, but I'm not too sure. Like, have you got a question or anything else you'd like to add uh, before we wrap things up uh, for this this chat, really, or anything like you'd like to say to the people that are, are, are listening? Uh, you did prep this, and I, I didn't. I didn't think it through. Sorry. Um, I think I would just go with my kind of my two sort of general general pieces of advice are that there there is no there is no substitute for experience. So go get as much of it as you can. Um, and if you want to if you want to be be good at this, if you want to be impactful at it, if you want to to have a have you know your career in this doing this to have longevity, then you need to you need to kind of keep your passion for the outdoors outdoors going. And how you do that might change over time and that's okay um you know like i said before for me kind of taking the opportunity to get out and watch the sunset or a sunrise just sort of just just kind of reminds me why i do it and why i love it but but making sure you've got your kind of your own time in the outdoors and your own experience of it as well just keeps you fresh so yeah that's, that'd be that'd be it, i guess uh i don't particularly have a question for anybody sorry absolutely mate that's <laughs> brilliant way that's like a brilliant way to, to end things to be honest mate i think having to think about longevity and, and what it is that keeps you passionate about the outdoors stuff, like beyond the, the job or help to keep you passionate about that is, is a brilliant way to end it. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, um, thank you for having me, man. It's good to see you. Yeah, no worries, man. Uh, so yeah, uh, as everyone knows, like make sure to check out uh, Mike on Instagram and Facebook. Make sure to show some support. And as always, it's going to be linked in the comments below. And yeah, feel free to give us a like, share and subscribe. But other than that, thank you so much for watching or listening. Until next time, take care. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thank you so much. Okay, so that's the end of the podcast. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Mike, for taking part. If you're interested in taking part in an outdoor instructor chat yourself, then please feel free to reach out or even just drop me a message if you've got questions that you'd like me to ask other outdoor instructors. I've got loads more free resources online on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and as a podcast. So make sure to check those out as well. But other than that, thank you so much for watching or listening. And until next time, take care.